Hi, my name is Katie Chu. I'm a California licensed architect. Today, I'm going to demonstrate the Chinese bracket system. Chinese bracket system plays a very important role in traditional Chinese architecture because it supports the weight of the roof and transfers the weight of the roof to the column and to the bottom. So, uh, Today, this model I got from China, and this was built based. It was made based on the the Fo Guang Si in Shanxi Wu Tai San, Shanxi Province. And the Fo Guang Si, uh, Tang Dynasty, as we know, it was more than thousands year thousands years ago, and it was found so far. It's the oldest architecture wood, uh, oldest. Uh, wood structure in chi China. So uh, right now, let me demonstrate how it work. So this is the first. Oh, this is column. This is the lintel. The first element on top of the column is called zuo dou, ru dou, or da dou. It has different names. It depends on which dynasty has different way of name call it. So in Liang Sinsen's book, it's called ru dou. Ru dou sits on Column. The width of the rudo is almost the same as the width of the column. Above the rudo, there is this member. This member called gong. One is ni dao gong, one is man gong. It depends on the, the direction of the, the gong. So we can click them together like this. In Chinese architecture, it's very similar with Japanese architecture. We don't use the nail to hold the member together. We use mortise system. And, and this is called sando. Sando is the small, is uh, like one a size of the zuo dou. It's smaller smaller but it's used everywhere in dogon system in bracket system it's the member that can hold the member above So this this is the sec the first layer of dogo. So now we are going to build the second layer. The second layer is called mangong. It's longer than the first layer. It's longer than the first uh ni dao gong and the hua gong. But the width is the same. The width of the member is the same. But the length is different. So why not we keep them together? and put on top of the first layer. And also for each side, the end of each side, we put in sandal. Okay, so now we put on bin to line up in center. And here is more like cantilever bin. We put in another direction. Hope you can see it clearly. So right now we can tell which which side is interior, which side is outside. So here is the column, here is the bin, here is the exterior of the building, here in, is inside, outside, inside.
to San San Do Ying, and also the Bing member on top. Is is wrong direction. It's supposed to be here. Now we put in another cantilever beam above. Wrong side. Fitting perfectly. So in Liang Sisson's book, this co on the candy lever beam for the roof weight push down here roof push down here this side has a balance function okay put on sound in chinese architecture the roof if roof if overhand it's so far away from the the wall so the bracket system they jump outside layer by layer so it can hold the the very large overhand of the roof if this sandal later on, you can see it's hold another cantilever beam above This is called the beak of on. As you see, this tiny, tiny pin plays a very important role to hold all the members together. One more member to fit in. Okay, let me use the tiny pin to hold them tightly. Okay, as you see right now, it's still wiggling. The reason it's wiggling is because right now we don't have any weight on top of the, the bracket system. If we put a very heavy weight here, so this one can hold on very tight. It can support a very heavy weight. That's why for Guangxi is over thousands of years. It doesn't use any nail, but it can still survive. Uh, in China, China has a lot of earthquake. So you can see for the building, they can survive for such a long time. It must have a very, very strong system to support it. For Dang, for the uh so if you are interested in Tang dynasty uh building structure actually the best way you can fit is you can visit japan japan has a lot of building structure that was built 
more like Tang style. In China, there's only one or two structural Tang Tang Dynasty structure left. Most of them were destroyed, but Japan still have a very good resource of the the style, the architecture style. I hope you learn something from from this video and enjoy it. Thank you.